Many years ago, I received a phone call from an ex-girlfriend. I was in the UK doing my studies in Leicester. And I received a phone call from my ex-girlfriend. Uh, we'll call her girlfriend, that one. And she said, hey, Bob, how are you feeling? How are you taking it? Remember, I'll always be here for you if you need me. And I asked her, what do you mean? And at that moment, there was pregnant silence, because I didn't understand, we were not communicating. And after a few seconds of silence, she hung up. I was, uh, I'm a man whose ego is as big as the Manchester United Trophy cabinet. And I said, of course, this is an ex-girlfriend trying to get back with me. After all, I'm tall, dark, <laughs> and absolutely handsome. <laughs> and I said, you know, we didn't have IG, so there was nothing like sliding into the DM. So I thought all that was being said because the punchline was, if you need me, I will always be there for you. But I was in the UK, had a lot of attention from the ladies. So a girl in Kenya, that's Ministry of Local Government. <laughs> I will come back and deal with you after my tour of duty <laughs> is over. There's Chinese, Ni Hao. There's Wagwan, Jamaican. And I felt I was that kind of guy. But a few minutes after that, maybe half an hour to 45 minutes after that, I received a call from Auntie Betty. Auntie Betty says, Bob, today I'm not Robert Burale, Israel. Allow me just to be Bob. And Auntie Betty says to me, your dad, your dad is dead. And at that moment, ladies and gentlemen, my lips go dry. My saliva became poisonous. My eyes went pale and my knees were as heavy as heavy could be. And my feet could not move. What do you mean? My father, Apollo, Alfred, Wanguria, is dead? This is the man I looked up to. This is the guy I said, when I come of age, this is who I will be. But now, he is no more. Tickets are organized, I'm sent a ticket, I go back home, I come back home, and I go to Lee Funeral Home, and I see this man, my hero, my pillar, the man who only, every time he lectured me, used only two books, the Bible and the complete works of Shakespeare. A man of great wisdom. If he wasn't a lawyer, he definitely would have been a Luo man. <laughs> but anyway, his mother was Luo, Luo. And I looked at him, and at that moment, at Lee Funeral Home, looking at this great man, I realized the baton has just been passed on to me. And yes, I wasn't the oldest son, but at that moment, I realized the baton has been handed over to me. But the truth of the matter, my baby and my buana, I was not ready. I don't think, I mean, I was still under his tutelage. I was still being mentored by him. He died before his time. So I assumed I had another 15 to 18 years of learning under this great man that when he gives me the baton, I'll be the best thing since sliced bread. And at that time, I decided after we buried him, I said, I don't have what it takes. And I ran away from that baton. And I ran into something else. Because I knew I don't have this mantle and this grace of this leader. Then let me run to a place where I will be made to feel as if I have it. What did I do? I ran into the arms of women who told me what I wanted to hear. Women made me feel like a king, yet I forgot the mantle of kingship. I started hanging around with the who is who. Women gave me the kingship in me, hanging around with princes, sons of kings, if you know what I'm talking about, made me feel as if I am a man. As if that was not enough, I paid to receive praises, and that's when I went to strip clubs. 
I would go for strip clubs and those ladies would walk in and see me and I appeared, I'm the guy, I would give money, borrowed money, I would give a lot of money and I would give a lot of money. Other men were giving 50 shillings, I was giving a thousand shillings. You slap her with a thousand shillings. And every time I walked in, they said the big kahuna has come in. But out there, I was this guy who was strong. I was a public success and a private failure. And I would meet some young man, when I grow up, I want to be like you. Anytime somebody praised me, it pierced me. Because I said, you don't know what you're talking about. I am still searching myself. Because I gave this picture. Like Sanaipei said, I wasn't a public figure then, but Sanaipei was a public figure, so the pressure of appearing, you're the, you understand what I'm saying? You're the alpha male. You walk into a room and everybody turns. You walk into a room, every man is jealous of you and every woman is smiling at you. And every young man wants you to mentor them and every watchman salutes at you and says, you are the guy. But when I went into my room, there was absolute emptiness. I was that, that man whose right leg was on a banana peel and left leg was on a slippery floor. I had no grounds to stand on. So what would I do? Run back to strip clubs. Let the ladies dance for me. You know, the eye contact made me feel as if I'm the guy. They lick their lips and I lick mine in return. <laughs> There's nothing as painful as saying you can sing and everybody closes their eyes and waiting for you to sing, and your vocal cords is saying, Unasema. <laughs> then you have to keep up that image. Ladies and gentlemen, that thing is hard. One evening I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, uh, Mr. Brawley, you gotta look at the good, the bad, and the ugly. Enough is enough. It is what it is. Whoever hates me will hate me. Whoever loves me will love me. It is time to shed off this image of being a public success and a private failure. It is time to be you. Look at the good, amplify it. Look at the bad and the ugly, starve them. One night, I said, enough is enough, I'll take my life. Why? But I said, that's a very selfish thing to do. I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, you are as useless as useless could be. The only thing more useless than that is a speaker going to speak about winning mentality while wearing an Arsenal t-shirt. And I said no. And I look, I'm sorry, Arsenal fans. And ladies and gentlemen, like the speaker before me, it is hard to paint a picture of bliss, yet you have boils underneath you. The day I decided, Robert Burale Wanguria, come forth. That is when the possibilities were open to me. And as you've been told, I'm a preacher. That is when I met the Lord in a way I never thought possible. And the Lord says, now you have given me the raw materials. I will work with that. And possibilities were open, doors were open. And out of my death experience, the lips speak life because I have tested death. I speak victory now when I became honest with myself because I've tested defeat. I mean, how many people divorce after one year, two years, one year, two days in marriage? How many? I'm still a preacher. Nobody wanted me on their pulpit apart from my bishop. And I looked as if I had leprosy. Because one year, two days, I mean you should be enjoying somewhere in Mauritius. You understand what I'm saying? But when the open doors happened, when I saw into the mountain, I said, you know what? I wish I knew this before. I would have been as real as real could be. Ladies and gentlemen, you see me here showing you my scars, my failures. And I hope, as I've spoken to you, 
You know, I'm a preacher. I will not take a lot of your time because there's no offering here. I, I, <laughs> I speak to you as a man who carried the weight of the world upon his shoulders when I did not need to. All I needed to say, I can't sing. It is what it is. This is who I am. Whoever loved me still loves me. Whoever hates me does not matter what I do. In fact, if there are people who hate me, they're saying even that's not a white trouser, it's a blue trouser. <laughs> so just as me, be yourself, be true, own your truth. Ladies and gentlemen, there'll come a time, one time, that your life will flash right in front of your eyes like it did to my father, and you'll have to hand over the baton. The question is, what will you be handing over? The only thing I have to hand over is being real, saying this is me, love me for my scars, hate me for my scars. Today I haven't spoken to you as Robert Borale Wanguria, I have spoken to you as Bob, son of Apollo Alfred Wanguria and Grace Wintress Mudunga Wanguria, a man who made great mistakes, but one time looked at himself in the mirror and engaged with myself. And I say it, it is what it is. Love me, hate me, I will give you the real me. And that is why God, by his grace, has taken me far and wide. Because he said, you have given me the raw materials. I can work with that. My last words to you, remove the mask. Let God work with the raw materials. My name is Robert Brale, and I approve of the message. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.